Hello everyone, you're through to St Mark's Online. This video uploaded for Sunday the 21st of March AD 2021. Greetings in Jesus' name. I'm Jonathan Fraze. Let's begin with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for ever. Knowing that we are the flock of the Good Shepherd, and in the next world will be guests at the great banquet of the King, we now bring ourselves secure in those promises to make our confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done. And we have done what we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare those who confess their faults, restore those who repent, as you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous and disciplined life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The special prayer for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, look mercifully upon your people so that by your great goodness we may be always governed and preserved both in body and in soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lenten Collect Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent, make in us new and contrite hearts, so that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I am so enjoying reading through every word of Mark's Gospel. Today, the mighty chapter 13. As Jesus was leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. Do you see all these great buildings? replied Jesus. Not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to be fulfilled? Jesus said to them, Watch out, that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. 
These are the beginning of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you see the abomination that causes desolation, standing where it does not belong, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the roof of his house go down or enter the house to take anything out. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that this will not take place in winter, because those will be days of distress unequalled from the beginning, when God created the world, until now, and never to be equalled again. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, whom he has chosen, he has shortened them. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect, if that were possible. So be on your guard. I have told you everything ahead of time. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near right at the door. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven or the Son, but only the Father. Be on your guard, be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, when the cock crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A prayer. Gracious God, we ask for your blessing now as we turn to your word and ask that what the Spirit has caused to be written, preserved, translated, sold, bought and now in our hands would come alive as the very word of God. For your name's sake. Amen. Here's a great promise. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm 
and steadfast. To him be the power for ever and ever. Amen. That's from 1 Peter 5. But how did Peter know that suffering in one form or another would come to us all? and in a particular measure to believers because they are believers. Today we return to the Gospel of Mark, which tradition says was dictated to Mark by Peter. Peter calls Mark, my son. That's also in 1 Peter 5. We find ourselves listening to Jesus, that's Mark 13, on the Tuesday afternoon of Holy Week. His crucifixion is near. Yet it will be his longest private amount of teaching to the disciples in Mark. Sometimes this chapter is called a little apocalypse or mini version of the book of Revelation. Jesus prepares his disciples to live without him, but with his spirit. So they will have the spirit of Jesus by telling them to do four things. First, to watch. The disciples admire the magnificent temple. Herod the Great had expanded what Nehemiah and Ezra had rebuilt. Jesus says that every stone will be thrown down, as indeed it was in the brutal Roman attack against the Jewish uprising of AD 68. Today's Western or Wailing Wall, into whose cracks Orthodox Jews place their rolled up prayers, is actually a buttress on the hillside. It's not part of the temple. So when will these things happen, asked four disciples, and what will be the sign that they are about to happen? We can sense their excitement. We'd quite like to know the answer. However, instead of a date for the future, Jesus gives them an ongoing attitude for each present moment. Watch out that no one deceives you, he says. This is a call to scepticism. For instance, there will be other messiahs or Christs, these words meaning literally anointed ones, who claim to have a special anointing from God. Now, if you are the sort of person that goes along with the crowd, then you'll be in trouble and be carried along by these self-important people who claim to be the ultimate anointed one. Many will come in my name, claiming I am he, says Jesus, and will deceive many. So you see, to be operating in Jesus' name and to be successful doesn't make you any good, necessarily. And the times of God shaking the nations with wars, earthquakes and famines, far from being the sign of Jesus' return, as some people always think, will actually simply be the first contractions, labour contractions, of a world groaning to be remade. These are the beginnings of birth pains, says Christ, as he adds mid-chapter, I have told you everything ahead of time. At the end of the chapter, he then repeats the combination of not knowing when, but always being vigilant. No one knows about that day or hour, he says. Actually, I once heard a preacher claim to know the month and year. Uh, like all the other predictions, the date, of course, is now past. Uh, not even the angels in heaven, says Jesus, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on your guard, be alert. So we're to be like those servants in charge of a house when the owner is away for a time. Let us be faithful then, as uh, Jesus is indeed our Christ and the Christ, and take the opportunity in any trauma and crisis to love our neighbour as ourself. First command is to watch, and then is to stand. Jesus divides people, always has done, always will. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues, he says. But it will be a great way to get past all those security guards in front of important people. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. One clue as to the delay of Jesus' return, which is quite clear will happen, is that the gospel must first be preached to all nations. So that's 
declared to every tribal group. And we're not there yet. So learn as much as you can, but don't be anxious when you are caught unprepared. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, he says, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Why not? Because God is with you. A touch of Psalm 23 right in your life. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Exciting experience right in the presence of adversity. Was ever thus. As I learnt from stories told when I lived in post-communist Eastern Europe, brother will betray brother to death. Teachers had to ask pupils whether their father and mother attended services and then report them. Children will indeed rebel against their parents. Such will be the intensity of the imprisonment of pastors, the burning of Bibles and the shutting of churches. The two I worked in just after the fall of the Iron Curtain, at one was, had been a recording studio and the other a museum. Uh, that all men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. That's the promise we have. That's the challenge for each of us to accept. Third, we're called to flee. Jesus gives us permission to move away from the worst of the conflict. Not everyone need be a hero, and sometimes it's wisest to survive to witness another day. Horrendous things have indeed been prophesied in the latter chapters of the book of Daniel, and Jesus quotes the prophet foretelling the trampling by pagans on sacred things, the abomination that causes desolation. Then flee to the mountains, he says. Previously, we heard that childbearing was a symbol of the world crying out to bring forth a perfect successor. But now Jesus sympathises with mums with newborns when disaster strikes, saying how dreadful it will be in those days for nursing mothers. Even when it is part of God's plan, a city cannot kill the Lord of glory without consequence. And history records that the depth of horror and pain in AD 68 against Jerusalem was indeed unequalled from the beginning. However, for anyone caught up within it, there is hope, there is always hope in the mercy of God. If the Lord had not cut short those days, no one would survive, says Jesus. But for the sake of the elect whom he has chosen, he has shortened them those days. And fourth, the call is to know, K-N-O-W, to know. How will it end? With a cosmic light show, says Jesus. The stars will fall from the sky, the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Of course, the universes are cheering for the return of the Son of Man to the blue planet, perfectly positioned from the sun, perfectly proportioned in air and minerals and teeming with intricately designed life, where he gave his own life for those rebels made in the image of God. You won't need a screen to see him, coming in clouds with great power and glory, and gathering his elect. Have you noticed in Mark 13 how this particular word of comfort, which emphasises God's hold of us, is used most when the pressure is on? I love that. When we're deep in adversity, God wants us to be clearest that we're part of his purposes, doing his will, and he holds us. Consider the fig tree, says Jesus. When it is in leaf, you know summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, that's wars, persecutions, traumas, you know that it, his return, is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, just this generation that is the apostles will certainly not pass away or die until all these things, those wars, persecutions and traumas, have happened or started as recorded in the book of Acts. But we live with that last scene in salvation drama 
to come. We live with Jesus permanently at the door. Wonderful to be able to look back on so much God has done. So what do we do? Heaven and earth as we know them will pass away, but Jesus says my words will never pass away. The Soviets tried to remove them as fantasy, but people kept passing around them even a page at a time to read them. The liberal theologians over 150 years have tried to disprove, disprove these words as inaccurate, but archaeology keeps digging up evidence as to their truth. And today's woke establishment tries to deplore them as bad for your health, but wherever they are applied, they bring blessing. So Jesus tells us to watch with discernment, stand with courage, flee when necessary, and know that God is still in charge. Mark and Peter encourage you to do so. Let's pray. Loving Lord and gracious Heavenly Father, write these truths on our heart, their challenges, their encouragements, the important knowledge, this slice of good news, which we need to know if we, we will be true servants of yours, for your name's sake. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Loving Lord, we've come through the last year with such different experiences. On the one hand, people have learnt new skills, completed practical projects, reconnected with friends and enjoyed extra family time. But others have suffered loneliness, anxiety, pain and loss. May our loving behaviour to each other help us all as we cast all our cares on you, who care for us, as we thank you for your mercies over the past year and trust you for all that is to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your church globally. Bless every pastor and evangelist and lay officer with faithfulness and courage in their work. In particular, saving Lord, we pray for Kevin and Jennifer. With China closed to foreign nationals, uh, they remain in that far east, but uh, outside China, yet able to contribute to the Asia Bible School with many students working in many languages online. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we do ask that you protect those specifically persecuted for the faith and who stand for Christ in hostile situations. Today, crying out to you for uh, believers in the communist regimes of North Korea and China, not forgetting China's growing control over Hong Kong where many brothers and sisters live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, please help the nations to make wise decisions in time of pandemic. May people recognise their frailty, find hope in you and peace amid their trauma. We pray for those who live in war zones, thinking today of Syria now in its 10th year of civil war, and Mozambique with war newly starting. Please may uh, aid to those in distress get through and please assist those who work for peace and just settlements. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide the Queen, her royal family, Prime Minister and everyone in government. We pray for doctors, nurses, other hospital staff, hospice and rest home uh, staff too, including chaplains and their teams, for strength and protection. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, our refuge and strength, we pray for the peace and prosperity of our parish and refreshment for all key workers. At this time of national census, we pray for people to count themselves as Christians, added to his flock and not subtracting from the faith. In addition, please bless Bexhill Food Bank and Bexhill's Homeless Unity Group as they feed the hungry and support the lonely and the vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, we remember those who struggle in body, including with COVID and long COVID, or in mind, or in spirit. We remember those anxious, lonely, shielding, and those who care for them. In particular, we remember Bill Beatty, Bill Dacker, Matthew Ema, Marjorie Peacock and Tim Voltson local. God of all comfort, we thank you for those who have fought the good fight of faith to the end, remembering once more with thanksgiving Peter Reeves and David Rossiter, praying for your comfort and peace for those who mourn. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we praise you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that we fall into no sin, nor run into any kind of danger, but govern and guide us at all times, so that we may do what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This Sunday afternoon, where again zooming together so seeing each other computer to computer with an even song at five o'clock do get in contact if you'd like to join in that opportunity for 30 minutes of a said service together he who would valiant be against all disaster let him in constancy follow the master there's no discouragement shall make him once relent his first avowed intent to be a pilgrim. Whoso beset him round with dismal stories, do but themselves confound, his strength the more is. No foe shall stay his might, though he with giants fight, he will make good his right to be a pilgrim. Since, Lord, thou dost defend us with thy spirit, we know we at the end shall life inherit. Then fancies flee away, I'll fear not what men say, I'll labour night and day to be a pilgrim. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, not virtual but real, the Son, unmasked in the gospel and the spirit not socially distant be with you and all whom you love both near and far and remain with you always amen thank you for remaining connected with st mark